Hello guys, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Twin Finance. My name is Jackson. Before I get into anything today, I just want to say Happy New Year. I didn't get a chance yet to post a video on the channel since the New Year rolled around. I was on vacation, but I'm back now and I'm going to put a video up today for you guys. And today the video we're going to talk about is Sears. And I know across America and Canada, everybody knows you know, Sears was once a massive company. You know, they did everything, home, design, fashion, uh, appliances, everything, you name it. Sears basically did it. They were even doing some stuff for the military at one point, I believe. I was reading about their history over the years and that was in there. Uh, obviously, if you have kept up on Sears, you know that they're on a pretty steep decline right now. Kind of in a similar situation to GE. GE's not quite as bad as Sears, but it's the same situation where they kind of spread themselves too thin in a lot of industries. That's, I mean, that's just my opinion, but I think they spread themselves too thin in a lot of industries and then kind of fell behind as they're not really the top dog in any industry. So they started to get phased out because these new companies, you know, the Amazons and everything started emerging and taking back some of their, some of their uh, profits and everything. And then they just went downhill from there. So I'm just going to jump right into it. I got some stuff down here for you guys to give you a quick recap on Sears and where they're at. Um, Sears department stores, mainly what most of us know, um, but they're actually owned by Sears Holding Squirt now. That's their, their, their company that they're owned by. And they also own Kmart. So obviously Kmart, if you've been following up on them too, it's the same situation as Sears, same company, right? So if you didn't know, like they're owned by the same company, now, now you know. I just wrote some quick facts over here. At one point in their peak, between Sears and Kmart, they had 3,500 stores across America and Canada. And now after this year, they're closing down 80 more stores. They're gonna be hovering right around 400 stores left. So, I mean, if you look at just off that, a 90% reduction basically in, in where they once were, that's pretty hefty guys. You know, a lot of jobs lost, a lot of money lost in investors' money, a lot of debts that aren't gonna be paid because they're bankruptcy, right? So that's affecting a lot of people in a lot of ways financially. Um, I just wanna say one thing about Sears though, and I know I, this is just my experience, I haven't went to every Sears store ever, but my experience with Sears has never really been that great. I know I'm not that old, so I wasn't around too much when they were in their peak and their 3,500 stores, but from my experience recently in the past 10 years, you know, going to Sears, you know, I go to the Sears in the mall that's by my house and the experience is always bad. There's no employees and it, not no employees, but they're just harder to come by. The department store is massive and you're just trying to get some help from someone and they're not really there. And then their, their attitude's just kind of like, the, they own the business and it's closing down. That's what the kind of vibe you get. Like when you're in the store, you start to understand and see how this could be a failing business. And the experience just isn't there. And I think I read a quote the other day and it was saying about how businesses need to change. And it was saying how department stores, it, Amazon didn't kill department stores, you know, like limited availability and, and uh, like things like that, like they didn't change, right? Amazon, yeah, ultimately was the company that came in and started taking their profits away, but Amazon didn't kill them. The fact that the, the, these big department stores and everything didn't change killed them. It's not that they couldn't change, they didn't change. That's why they were killed, not, not because of Amazon. And I just wanna say one more thing too, and the CEO, he put in a bid to save the company, ended up saving around 45,000 jobs, which is obviously very good for the economy, 45,000 jobs. It's still a big amount because you want as many jobs as in the economy as, as possible at all times. But he put in a, I think it was $5.2 billion bid from his hedge fund. I believe he's a hedge fund guy. He put in a $5.2 billion bid to save the company. So that's not going to go underwater. But that's all fine and dandy to help out financially. But like I just said, man, the bad experience, I don't think like you can put money into the business, $5.2 billion, and you know, maybe keep it afloat financially so it doesn't sink and it can stay around for a bit longer. But if you don't get back to the root of the problem and, and why it all went bad in the first place, like I said, spread too thin across a lot of industries, start losing a little bit of profits because people are a little bit better than either. you. It's hard, you can't be the top dog in this industry, this industry, this industry, this industry, and that industry, that, you, you can't. Like, that's not that you can't, it's just very hard. It's a lot harder to be great at a lot of things instead of just being great at a couple things. So. I think the root of the problem is not, you know, the financial stuff. Obviously, they got in financial hot water. They're in bankruptcy talks and everything right now. But back to the root of the problem is a bad experience, right? If Sears was always that great experience and 
they really had their stuff figured out, they never would have gotten the financial hot water in the first place, right? So I think even if they do stay around, I really don't, unless they fix that problem, I don't really see them staying around for the super, super long haul. I don't see them climbing back to where they once were by any means, unless they, don't, they really fix this somehow. And I don't have all the answers for that, but unless they fix this problem, this $5.2 billion bid from the CEO, it's not gonna help out too much long-term. I know investors have been liking it. I've been keeping an eye on their stock price a little bit just to see, because I was interested with the bankruptcy talks and everything. Obviously, it's just an interesting company, you know, where, where they once were, now they're in bankruptcy, and they're really like a small company now. I believe their market cap's like 60, 60 million. Um, but their stock price has been up like 400% or whatever since the CEO put the bid in. But I mean, I think if you're getting in Sears now, you probably missed that boat. Uh, I think eventually they'll probably taper back off and, and I don't think they'll be around forever, guys. So I think eventually one day they'll probably go out of business. But that's just my opinion. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it for this video. I just wanted to do a quick video about Sears and, you know, it's just a really, to me, it's a really interesting uh, tra like transformation over time to see how they've really missed, they've been off the ball for a while and how they're really going downhill. See such a big company, you know what I mean? Like you think of the Sears Tower in Chicago, this huge building and everything. Like to just think of like the stuff that Sears was, like the, the things they were, they like a, I don't know the word I'm trying to look for here, but like the, all the things that they once were now where they are today, it's just really kind of sad to see. Really bad, obviously, mismanagement of the company and everything. But yeah, so I just wanted to do a video on that. Thank you for watching. As I said, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.